you are a vortex generator. In fact, we all are vortex generators. Pretty much anything that's a bluff body produces vortices. But these are actually vortex generators, amigos, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we've done a, another simulation on other vortex generators, and the reason why I wanted to look at this one is because it is very different. So we have a streamlined orbit here, and it shows the velocity of the flow in um, color. And it shows that there's only one vortex being formed. So this is interesting because there are a bunch of different types of vortex generators. You can get vortex generators like this, which only form one vortex, and how you would align these or space these ones on an object, let's say a wing. You'd put a bunch of these just side by side into space, maybe by two or three vortex generator widths apart, and you'd have all these vortex vortices of the same sign um, coalescing. So they'll just keep um, going like that. An alternative is you make an object that creates what's called counter-rotating vortices. So the other simulation that we've done on vortex generators was this one, this type of vortex generator. So it's very different to this one. So what is the difference between this type and the other type? This one is what's called like a co-rotating vortex system. So uh, all these vortices that you'll get all rotate in the same sign, whereas the other one are counter-rotating vortices. And they Counter-rotating vortices are typically more suit, are better for the applications that we use it for. But co-rotating are good for certain applications. For example, if you want to get a bit more of a uniform um, distribution of the boundary layer, these ones are a little bit better in that respect. Anyway, so these streamlines, you can see that there is quite a bit of a roll-up, but it's not that aggressive. Let's look at some other planes. So now we have an X-plane going from upstream, coming downstream through the vortex generator. And this is a really cool view because as the plane continues downstream, you can see this vortex, this this vortex is actually forming. We can see this wake getting stronger and stronger, or at least more prominent as you go downstream. So you can see when it first comes off of the vortex generator, there doesn't seem to be much of a vortex at all. But as you go downstream, this little curl just keeps on giving. So you can see that this vortex is forming. It's just that it's sort of hidden in the rest of the flow around the vortex generator when it's over the vortex generator. And then when you go downstream, it becomes more apparent as the rest of the wake dies out because the vortex it's going to take longer to die out simply because it has a bit more energy with a bit more of the rotation and it's also a low pressure core so it sort of sucks in uh, flow that way let's look at another plane so now we have a y plane going from one side through the vortex generator and it's showing us what we want to see it's giving us the goods we can see as it hits the tip that that entire wake just really appears straight away and then there's a little bit of a boundary layer um, formation over the actual vortex generator itself. You can see that little blue bit, that's actually probably a bit more of a separation area as well. Um, but then downstream, you can see that there's quite a big wake coming straight from this vortex generator part, but then it dies out very quickly, leaving that vortex. So that's the simulation. Make sure to like, subscribe, and let us know if you want to see any other vortex generators, what type of shapes, because this is not only this the type that you can have, you can have a whole bunch of different ones. You can use like just the can if you want to. You can put this in reverse. Maybe that would even be interesting. So anyway, if you want to get better at CFD or theory, check out our courses in the link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, amigos.